Hello, my name is Rhea Ray. I work as a digital assets project manager in the special collections and university archives at the Florida International University Libraries in Miami, Florida. Hello, my name is Jamie Rogers and I am the assistant director of digital collections at Florida International University. Here's a link to the project site, which will be continuously updated. Go.fiu dot edu backslash Dorsey, D-O-R-S-E-Y. We would like to begin by introducing our project for enhancing access and research possibilities through critical engagement with historical data. This initiative was generously funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities, Humanities Collections and Reference Resources Program. Although we have not completed the grant, we are sharing our progress to encourage conversation about this type of work. In fact, dialogue about the ethical collection and access to data in itself is one of our central goals. I will give you a little background on the project. The historical data that we are using in the grant focuses on a collection of papers that belonged to Dana A. Dorsey. Dorsey was regarded as Miami's first black millionaire. He was known to have amassed wealth through real estate. He moved to Miami in the late 1890s and lived there until his passing in 1940. FIU professor emeritus, Dr. Marvin Dunn, donated the Dorsey papers to the Florida International University Libraries in 1999. The papers were digitized and made available online in 2003. The collection consists of 291 documents, which include warranty deeds, mortgages, legal documents, and correspondence. These detail the properties and locations of what were newly created Miami subdivisions from around 1900 through 1940. Because the documents contained location information referenced in multiple ways, no systematic way has been determined to access the data. We collaborated with FIU's Geographic Information Systems Center and Dr. Levente Yuhas was able to devise a way to use scanned plat map sheets from the Hopkins 1925 plat map of Greater Miami, which was in our collection, to georeference the properties. In the fall of 2020, a GIS intern, Adiola Colapo Alowu, worked to geolocate 30 properties from the Dorsey documents. Building on this success, we applied for an NEH grant to complete georeferencing images and digitizing properties. This project aims to address the significant gaps in our historical record actively engage in data collection processes that are rooted in humanity and establish a model for future human-centered data work. The development of an ethical care-based community of practice for contemporary and historical data collection and creation is ongoing. This project is informed by the enduring efforts of community archives, archivists, librarians, historians, and digital humanists who have centered social justice in their work. This will be a transparent and iterative process with frequent discussions and ongoing check-ins with our local archives community and the public, as well as feedback from our advisory board and consultant. We intend to exercise intentionality and care in the gathering and sharing of this data, thoroughly documenting our work, as well as the feedback we receive. We have included some examples from the collection in the project site that we feel represents the complicated transaction information present in the documents and the types of connections that can be made through the georeferencing of the properties. Like this mortgage deed seen on the screen between Rosa Stroman, a single woman, and Dana Holding Company. The work done to georeference this property can be seen on this 1925 plat sheet. It's the blue square. <clears throat> Further research verified the ownership of the property and uncovered that the property was transferred from Rosa Stroman to the state of Florida in 1965. This is a deed we found online. 
geolocating the property on a 2022 Google map places its location under a local Miami Expressway, the I-395. During the 1960s, many overtown properties like Rosa Stroman's were claimed by the state under eminent domain and demolished to build the I-395 highway. In addition to mapping the locations of these properties, our project team will use data visualization to help us analyze the content of the collection materials and guide our data collection process. One example of this is a network analysis of primary signatories to these documents created by our digital humanities librarian, Molly Castro. Each person is linked to others through the documents their names appear in. The thickness of the lines indicate the number of connections through these documents. This analysis allows us to identify clusters of centrality, as well as highlighting the frequency of interaction. We plan to run this type of analysis again with organizations and business entities, and eventually with the full list of people mentioned in the documents. As we began to plan for this project, the team spent a considerable amount of time discussing the ways we could move beyond a duplication of the transactional nature of these materials to focus on the people involved, their connections and their stories. This work has also compelled us to think more deeply about the ethics of demographic data. Since the individuals in these legal documents and correspondence have no control over how they're identified, either by race, gender, et cetera, we are relying on others' recordings of their identity. Some of the questions we have are, how do we build personal stories from transactional data? How do we determine identity information of individuals who have passed and were labeled by others? What personal, financial, and demographic information should we make public as data? And how do we remain transparent about how this information was gathered? We have some thoughts, but we welcome conversation with others. During the Q&A period, we hope to respond to any of your questions, as well as engage you with how we can form better ethical data collection access and display practices. Thank you.